So, uh, so I'm going to go to my destination disk, and I'm going to deactivate the MBR. This is basically so that Windows doesn't blow up. So I deactivate it. It turns it off. And now I'm going to just turn off the machine. So now what I want to do is now I have this catalog. I'm going to take my, my actual destination disk, and I'm going to take my destination disk off of the machine, and I'm going to plug it into Windows. <laughs> so let's see if this switches screens correctly. <sighs> okay, so now I've got it plugged into Windows, and Windows wouldn't be able to see anything. Basically, all I would see at this point. Comes up. <clears throat> if the drive initializes and shows up. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so basically I have an uninitialized disk, no MBR, and it just has just the all unallocated space. But the piece of software that goes with this device knows that I have a table and it knows where this table is. So what I should be able to do, now this will look a little beta. And so uh, you Visual Basic people will kind of know what I'm talking about here. Um, um, yeah, it's USB external hard drive. Um, for the, for the imager, the imager talks through all the ATA commands and actually does all the work uh, at, the, at the actual imager level itself. The, uh, this now, I'm actually just using Windows. All it's going to do is read this table, and I'm going to be looking at this table. So this thing starts up. It's called Image Explorer. Um, now here's, it's really beta, so uh, here's the story. I'm going to just create a, no, I did not build this. This is actually part of the DeepSpar stuff. Uh, so I have this thing called Explorer, and basically it sees the two hard drives in the list. When I hit the two hard drives, it's going to go and it'll see that there's a partition, and now I can actually do something that's called scan file system. All this does is looks at all my MFT records over here on the right, and it's building me a table. And then once it's done, I'll actually be able to go down through the table. And now you'll actually see all the directories that are on this damaged drive. All I've got is an MFT. There is no data. Only the catalog, nothing else. So, you know, as you're looking down the list and you see something you care about, so if I go, say, into the documents and settings folder and I go to Bob Pelamonte, then uh, Bob has a My Documents folder and maybe Bob's pictures. Oh, look, I, want, I care about hot chicks. I want hot chicks. Uh, as I go back in the list, uh, you know, maybe I want some porn. Oh, it's porn music. We'll take that. Uh, we go back down the list here, and let's see what else we got. Um, so porn, porn, LOL, I'll take that one too. All right, so, so I've selected some porn off his computer. I don't want the Windows system folder. I don't want an allocated. I don't want anything else. All I care about are these folders. Yeah, the important stuff. The important. The important. What's that? It, it will be able to export them, and I will be able to look at them. But what's going to happen now is I have to update the catalog. I have to say hey, give me a catalog and put it on this device. So I'm going to select it for imaging. So basically that's what this now does is it'll go through 357 commands now. It's going to add them to the list, and it's going to crawl through it, and it's going to update it. You can see it doing the list actually right there, processing, and then it's done. So it selected them all. So now all I have to do, I'm going to save my project, and I'm going to close. And then I'm just going to unmount this disk. Uh, which probably won't do anything because there's no OS on it. So I'm turning it off. And then I take this, again, my destination disk. I'm connecting it back to the machine. And I will turn this thing on. Now I'm going to switch back to that machine so you can see what I'm doing next. 
What's that? No, I never did get my camera working again. All right, so now the machine's booted. I'm going to I'm going to run my application which is part of the hardware. And Yeah. Then this I'm hitting F11 to turn the power on. This device will now turn the power on. Now keep in mind that there's like all these functions that have existed on this thing for like three years before we got this bar that does whole bunches of other things. Images in reverse, skip stuff, does all kinds of damaged areas. I'm just going to focus on what these files are and if there's damage in other places on the drive that, because FTK wouldn't make it through this drive. It would die in all the, all the unallocated space and all the other stuff I would normally have to copy. So, uh, so now I have my device selected. And so now I still have the same status. Everything that was on my device before is still there. I can basically do an imaging job. You know, like you can't do this with FTK. You can't just like stop and come back later. So I can actually stop an image in process, put it on the shelf, do another job, put the two back on, and the configuration that comes from the destination drive will maintain all the status information for everything. Anything that's already been copied, it will never do again. Anything that needs to be copied, it will still have a table to. But right now, it just has a table that basically says, I want to image all those files that you selected. So I will be able to actually start all over at the beginning, the beginning of the disk, and I will be able to tell it to go ahead, and it will only select those files that I image. And you'll see it skipping big chunks of data. So you'll actually see what it's doing is it's building the list across the bottom. You'll see it going through physical files, headers, blah, blah, blah. And uh, as it's crawling through the disk, it may take it may take five minutes or so for this to actually work because this is a 160 gig drive. And it's got to make it from beginning to end, but it's only touching the sectors I told it for the folders that I cared about. So it's actually imaging those sectors. Yeah, Ben. You ever done an MD5 on a damaged hard drive? You, well, they uh, the piece of beta software that I showed you a minute ago, their plan is to actually be able to tell you percentages of individual files that were recovered. So, for instance, if you have a bad sector in the middle of the area that you care about, it will now know what the file is, and it will give you a report. That part is not done yet. It's still in beta, and so they're still working on that piece. But it actually has a reporting mechanism to even show you the physical files and the directory structure that you're working with. Um, so as it's going through the process, that's the plan. Yeah, you could still go back and MD5 those or have a report that actually would tell you the percentage of that. But uh, um, it'll skip It'll skip fragmentation. Um, there will still be some more later on, I think. We selected other directories. So it's skipping all the stuff that we did not allocate. Yes, sir? Um, it counts and it sees the pictures. And so see it has... Right now, 532 picks. It actually has that built in. The problem is, is that the screen refresh rate is at 100 milliseconds, but it's reading these at 10 millisecond blocks. So you're not seeing all the screen refreshes. I can I can drop that down, but as a programmer, you're probably well aware that if I do drop that down, the machine is slower. So I will increase the speed for it to write to the screen and decrease the speed of my actual processing. Can you, screen output? you can. You can disable. You can, or you can make it so high it won't count. But um, so if you wanted to, to slow down screen, but, you know, it is kind of really informative as you're going through it. In a lot of cases, you might even be able to tell what it is that you've actually got or what your file system is. Uh, and keep in mind, it's also doing this by cluster. It's not so it, it identified the cluster from the operating system. So you're going to get some slack space and stuff with those files and things as well. But uh, for the most part, um, everything here will be what we care about from a file perspective. So... Uh, and it'll skip, like I said, it may take 10 minutes or so for it to get this. There's some point, like after 50% of the drive, that there won't be any more data for me to care about. But uh, anything that's fragmented or anything that we selected later uh, is going to be probably further down the disk. But because this is also doing this sequentially, like when you mount a hard drive in your file system and you start trying to copy stuff off, there's a lot of uh, mounting and fragmentation and the head's basically thrashing around. In this case, because all of the LBA blocks were laid out in order, it's actually doing it sequentially from beginning of the disk to the end of the disk. So it's not causing any of that thrashing around or causing the head to do anything but move. 